Welcome while well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you. Today is Monday, and we are here. We are live. We would love for you to call us if you're watching. Please give us a jingle at 1 800 221 9460. If you're calling and you are outside North America, you can always reach us at 205 271 2980. You can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So, the question for this week, because believe it or not, it's Advent and a blessed Advent to you all. During Advent, how are you staying awake? and preparing for the coming of the Lord. You know, the calendar just rolls. We just yep. did Thanksgiving, and then, you know, not so many years, it goes that weekend, and it's like, ah, sometimes we have a break, and it's the following weekend. And then it's a new year. And so then it's, it's a liturgical a new, year. new year. Yes, Advent and it, it's just happening. So there we are. So we hope and pray that you all are having a blessed Advent, and we're going to talk about some of that today. But we did want to share that, we did have Thanksgiving. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And yes, we hope and pray you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We had 21 mm -hmm. at our house and house guests and our son Wesley and his family slept over and Anna and yeah. her family came and slept over. And, and you set a beautiful table. Yeah, and it took me a long time to set that table because normally yeah, I can knock it out in about an hour and a half but I had done it right after surgery, and so I was kind of going really slow. And you made four beautiful arrangements of flowers. Yes. Anna brought a beautiful antipasto. And all those pumpkins that were on that table were grown by Matthew Pinto, our son. Yeah. And then Anna, our daughter, she was in charge of the antipasto, and she just like exploded it mm -hmm. there, and it was just totally delicious. And then the kids played, they had their annual football game, and they flag played football. that flag football. Nobody really got hurt. A lot of the older people were just really, really sore. Faces of our grandchildren. Faces of our grandsons. That's Josiah, who had a birthday, James, who had a birthday, and RJ. So the cousins love getting together. We all went around the table, and we all shared what we were thankful for. And um, you started off, mm -hmm. and you started crying. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't know. So what are you thankful for? And I just looked at them, and I said, I'm so thankful for you. I was looking into their faces, seeing them getting older, and I guess I cried or something. Oh, yeah. And well, then, you triggered it. Everybody else shared about what they're thankful for. Everybody was crying. It was everybody like a crying was crying. It was the crying was Thanksgiving. And then Anna went, and, she, and then it just, it just like was yeah. a domino effect. And... Um, it just triggered, and so we yeah. had a lot of love, we had a lot of laughter, we had tears, and we had great, great the, food. The cousins just expressed how glad they are to have cousins. Yes. This is, again, the gospel of life and having children, hopefully by God's miraculous power and our cooperation with it. But to see cousins so happy about having cousins and ones mm -hmm. that they pair up with in a special way, and if they have friends, that's okay, but they have cousins, how mm -hmm. important that was. And then our children and in-laws sharing about their own lives, it was really obvious that they have their own joys and sorrows. Mm -hmm. And the basic sense was just, I'm so glad to be a part of this family, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that there really is a God, yes. and that, that there is Jesus, because there's so many things I can't figure out, don't know what to do, and can't change, and so on. So it was just like, boy, again, when you hear that, it's just the best stuff of life. Mm -hmm. And you just say, okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna be well as things go on, because all, this whole group is about life and marriage and the family and Jesus Christ and the church. Yeah, and it was it was really uh, beautiful. We had great desserts, and um, <laughs> the kids just had a great, great time. We did a puzzle together, which was lots of fun. Mm. And, you know, you really incorporate um, stuff from your past. And, um, you know, I, my, I lost my mom in 2009, but there's not a Thanksgiving morning mm. where I don't, feel her presence, I could hear her voice, yeah. you know, you're doing things and it's kind of like, ma -ma -ma, ba -da -da. you know, you're doing the puzzle. This is the way you make this. <laughs> and, and so it, you feel connected between yeah. heaven and earth and it, it's just beautiful. We had so much to be thankful for. So during yeah. Advent, how are you staying awake? And how are you preparing for the coming of the Lord? 1-800-221-9460. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking your questions and your comments on our show. So if you're watching, it's Monday. We are here. We are very alive. You can give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. Outside North America, you can reach us at 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So this was the question during Advent. How are you staying awake and preparing for the coming of the Lord? If you went to Mass yesterday or if it's Saturday night, you heard those great readings, great readings. Um, where they exhort us to how we're supposed to be living and hearing and, and what we're supposed to be doing. Um, so that, that's, that's a great wake-up call. Father Joseph Mary Wolf is here with us. What a privilege, beloved uh, Father Joseph uh, Mary Wolf, EW10 Chaplain, Chaplain Dean. Uh, Father, you there? Yes, and okay. so good to hear about your Thanksgiving, to see Thank some you. of the photos. I'm uh, up here actually celebrating Thanksgiving with my, my mother and uh, with oh. my sister and her family. And, you know, we're talking about Advent. And the other night, my mother and I were driving around, and here in front of this farmhouse was this huge lit star. And then they had this uh, rays coming down with lights down in the nativity scene. I thought, what a beautiful witness of what this season is all yes. about, mm -hmm. preparing for the Lord's coming, remembering right. his first coming, his first advent, and being prepared for his final advent in glory. Well said, Father, and uh, we're just so excited about the season of Advent. You're becoming quite a prolific writer these days, so you've got your latest, this 2022 Advent and Christmas Reflections ebook. So just share with mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Uh, Joy and I have downloaded that, plus it's wonderful because we, we got uh, the teaching immediately, you know, uh, uh, on email uh, on Sunday. So just share with us a little bit about the ebook, why it's a, a great help. Sure. And uh, yes, so we actually have, uh, they've set up a mini site, mini website, ewtn.com slash advent. And you can sign up for those emails to be sent to you. But you can also watch the videos that we made from those uh, texts. So the one that we did for Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent is actually posted there. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a lot of great resources on how to prepare and live Advent well, and even a video with uh, Mother Angelica and one for children as well. Well, that's perfect. It would be like the one-stop shop to really get everything <laughs> that you need for Advent. And with a great mm -hmm. hope that uh, families are gathering and they, are, they do have their Advent wreath and they're lighting their candle and they are preparing and they're reading together or watching the videos together so that they don't get swept up by the world in the Christmas season of shopping and acquiring yeah. and doing and as opposed to being with Christ and waiting and preparing and taking that interior journey. We're going to share a little bit more about that site in a few minutes, but Father, tell us, it, I thought it was just going to be Advent, teachings for Advent, but you really do go past Advent. Tell us when it concludes mm -hmm. uh, the ebook and, and why you concluded at that point. Yes, so the Christmas season goes until the baptism of our Lord. So we have a reflection for every Sunday of Advent, as well as Christmas, the uh, Feast of the Holy Family, Epiphany, and Baptism of the Lord. And I think, you know, one of the things we think about is Mary pondering these things in her heart. And she was pondering, Luke tells us, especially the events of her son's incarnation. And so that's a beautiful thing we can do to learn from Our Lady, ponder these events of Jesus' life with Mary, and grow in that union and love of Him who loved us first. Mm. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Father. May this be the greatest advent of your life as well. Thank and you so much. And give your love to your mother and your sister that are with you yes. from Jim and Joy. I sure will. Oh, God thank bless you. you, Father. Thank God you. Bless. Well, Joy, I wanted to continue with EW10.com forward slash advent. Go to that site, as yes. Father was saying. And so you can get his ebook, they'll send you emails, you can download it. Uh, but as Father said, there's so many resources and uh, you know, it begins with what is Advent? It gives mm -hmm. you a teaching on Advent, the coming of the Lord, when it begins, when it ends. Uh, there's a whole page on uh, why do we celebrate Advent? 
Why is Advent so important to the Catholic Church? Gives you some teaching on that. How do you prepare yourself for Advent? How do you observe Advent? So there's all these different questions, teachings, and it's so good for an individual, for a marriage, for a whole family. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you want to, you know, and maybe you feel a little bit behind right. in what you're doing. All the resources are there so that you can have a blessed Advent every day, especially on Sunday or gathering around the Advent wreath. What devotions we're going to do, everything is there. Father Joseph's reflections and how to order them are there on that site. And then, as we saw earlier, uh, videos about Advent, videos of Mother Teaching mm -hmm. on, on Advent, which is just super, um, reflections by various priests and teachers on Advent, and then uh, My Time with Jesus, uh, young people's yes. uh, uh, videos, so that they can relate in that way uh, to some of the uh, uh, gospel characters that they have there as young people sharing about Advent. So we need to build together a Catholic culture, mm -hmm. a Catholic culture. So you could be well informed, well schooled yourself, and uh, that in the domestic church, you know, you, you're, you're, you're the leader there. You, you're the priest in your house. You're the first one to introduce people to the Bible, to speak about evangelization, conversion, the sacraments. And so everything is there for you. EWTN.com forward slash Abbott. Please go to it and use the resources that are there every day yes. during this great season. Well, it, I, what I'd like to say about that, as a mother who raised and trained her children in the seasons, the liturgical seasons of the church, let me tell you something. You have to be intentional. It doesn't happen by accident or coincidence. You have to make it happen. So when it's dinner time and you're all gathered together, and I know our kids were playing basketball in high school and volleyball, and it would kind of, you know, it got, the schedules got a little crazy. Yeah. Well, then when everybody was together, and then sometimes we had to do it in the morning at breakfast, yeah. but you have to be intentional. <laughs> you have to be flexible, but you have to be intentional. Otherwise, you know what? It gets pushed to the wayside, and it just doesn't happen. Yeah. And you know what I've learned in life? You do what you want to do. If you want to run here and there and be out and about and do it, and then you're going to miss the intentionality of the season. And then you're just, you're the one being tossed to and fro, yeah. you know, as opposed to being anchored down and saying, as for me and my house, this is how we're going to do Advent. We will be intentional in our worship. We're going to be intentional yeah. in what we listen to, in the shows that we watch. You know, right now, I mean, you are being a barrage of, yeah. of Christmas shows that have nothing to do with Jesus with Christ Jesus. and the church. Nothing right. all about romance. And I mean, you know, yeah. it's nothing yeah. about Jesus. So you have to say, what am I going to watch? What am I going to hear? And what am I going to respond yeah. to in my heart? I, and you know, Advent says, slow down. Everything is saying, speed up. Mm -hmm. Advent says, slow down. It's a time of preparation more times of being still and knowing that I'm the Lord. So we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Give us a call. Uh, send us a comment. What does Advent mean to you? But in particular, this whole idea of staying awake, mm. being alert, throwing off darkness, um, having done with, with sin with your flesh and evil and lust. in our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we might not even know that we're doing some of the things that they're doing. So, so we're saying, Lord, enlighten me. Examine me, Lord. That, that I might change. I don't even see half the things that might be displeasing in your sight. Mm -hmm. So we want to hear from you. And okay. just as in Lent, and they call Advent like a mini Lent, mm -hmm. um, there'll be times, extended times for confession. Um, many parishes will give you a, 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 maybe an Advent retreat or they'll give you opportunities for you to participate, um, to have a good mm -hmm. confession. So you want to take advantage of that. And here's a comment from someone. It says, this Advent, I'm renewing my commitment to put the Lord first in my life. May his will be done, not mine. And this is from Lisa on yeah. Facebook. Those are all decisions we have to make because we can say it, but then we have to do what we say. And, yeah. and that means sacrifice. That means something else is going to have to go out of your life, like maybe... I don't know what, what, what's keeping you busy or keeping you from even attending church. And yesterday, Father John Paul uh, was the preacher at EWTN. Great, beautiful morning celebration of Mass. And, you know, he talked about that if you've been away from the church, 
come home to the church this Advent. If you, for whatever reason, you have stepped outside of the church, you are doing Jesus on your terms, come back home. Mm. The doors are open wide for you, and so is God's heart. And so, and that's and that's a plea. And all the all of you who are praying for your family members to come back to the church, your grandchildren, your children, don't stop praying. And then pray that God would put other people in their lives. It might not be you, but God's going to send other people to say, "Hey, you know what? Go back to church. Have you been to church? What are you doing this Christmas?" Scriptures. So important, mm -hmm. and and this Sunday's you know Advent readings, and even beforehand, I mean that theme of be awake, stay alert, wake up, Jesus. You don't know the time or the mm -hmm. hour. It'll be like at the time of, of Noah, and the rains came and the floods came, and one was was saved and the other one was was taken and so on. It, it's like that that Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. Are you ready? Are you preparing for the coming of Christ spiritually? Getting it right with every person you can get it right with as far as it's in your own control. Uh, seeking Jesus in, in other people. So getting ready. Do we really believe that he's even coming to be the judge of the living and the dead? If we really believe that, how would we prepare? Are we doing all that we can do in our own families to think of our own death and what we're leaving behind in terms of a legacy? But not only that, materially. Mm -hmm. Am I taking care of Joy? If I die, is, is thing, are things set for her as best as they could be? You know, have you, do you have a will? <laughs> um, do you have your wishes known about the service that you want? Do you have a burial place? And so some of these things I've done well, some I still need to do, but am I really acting like I'm going to die? <laughs> so it's not just the second coming of the Lord and the nativity of our mm -hmm. Lord, but any moment God could say, you know, especially those building wealth and trusting and wealth, you fool, mm. tonight I claim your soul. Would I be ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Are you praying for your family to be ready? Are we even dealing, not only with the second coming, with our own death, do you believe you can die? And are you prepared as best you can be to meet the Lord in all of his glory, radiance, but beauty and kindness? That, that's, that's the thing I fear most, mm -hmm. is seeing the beauty and kindness of the Lord compared to my life. Are you ready to meet the Lord? It says, this Advent, I want to start making a habit of regular confession at least once a month. I know I'm a sinner and I want to keep my heart clean so that I can truly welcome Jesus in at Christmas and every day for the rest of my life. And this is Julia in Brook, Virginia, which is a beautiful thing, right? And so we know at our cathedral, there's confession every afternoon from 1130. They have here confessions. Mm -hmm. Father, we have two priests now, and so now Father is allowing people to go to confession during Mass so that you're already there. You have no excuse not to attend. Um, mm -hmm. We have white noise in the confessional, so it's a very large cathedral. Yeah. You can go and make a beautiful confession and get your heart right with God. But I think that's a beautiful thing to avail yourself to say, first of all, ask the Holy Spirit, God, what are you doing to me? What is it that, what do you want from me? What can I do to make my heart pure and holy and, and serve you better? Jesus, what do you want from me? Ask the Lord. And then if you hear him speak, then be willing to obey yeah. and then do what he's asking you to do. And it might be go to confession. Mm -hmm. It might be go to daily mass. It might be um, start reading the Bible. Whatever God's asking you to do, then do it and do it well. Um, because we, you don't know and you think, oh, I could have, would have, should have, but yeah. we don't, nobody has the hour of the day in which they're going to die. One word changes everything. Mm. Yes. Lord, I say yes. Don't even know what I'm saying yes to, but I'm saying yes to you. Will you give the Lord your fiat, your yes as never before, that when you behold him, you will behold him, not shrinking back in fear, mm. but saying, well, I, I tried. I, I gave you my yes, and I tried to give you my best. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, we're going to go to Rome to check in with beautiful Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what are your thoughts on today's topic? Well, hi, Jim and Joy. You know, as you've just noted, of course, we are in Advent. It's that wonderful liturgical season of the year that comes after just the American Thanksgiving Day. And it's a time in which, of course, we are looking forward to the birth of our Lord. So it's anticipation, but it's also Thanksgiving that the, our Redeemer is going to arrive. And it's an exciting time of the year. I, I go back um, many ways to this period of, of joy, of anticipation, um, of Thanksgiving. I go back to my childhood, because our family celebrated every single feast day and saint's day and holiday and, and tradition in the Catholic Church. And I certainly remember Advent with the Advent wreath on our table and lighting the candles at night at dinner, just as we did uh, at church, of course, during Mass. Now, the third Sunday of Advent we know is Gaudete Sunday, and Gaudete means rejoice. And of course, we are rejoicing for the uh, upcoming birth of our Savior. And by the way, the word Gaudete is the first word of the entrance antiphon of the Mass that day. And the candle in the Advent wreath that day is pink, as are the priest vestments. Now, I remember all the stories that the Dominican nuns used to teach us in grammar school. They would tell us about every liturgical season, the meaning of the colors. Advent, of course, was awaiting the birth of Christ. And they told us about Jesus and Mary and about their travels uh, to Bethlehem where Jesus would be born. But one thing that the nuns always wanted to instill in us was the fact that the biggest gift we should look for on Christmas Day would be baby Jesus. It would not be some box beautifully wrapped with our name on it under the Christmas tree. Now Advent, of course, also is, it's a time that can be stressful because people are preparing for Christmas. They shop till they drop. They make travel plans, etc. But you know, above all, we have got to find time no excuses allowed for prayer. We've got to look to our inspiring reading at this time of year. And you know what, maybe even sharing thoughts with family members. And by the way, you can prepare as you're baking a cake, you can prepare and say prayers as you're decorating the Christmas tree. There's no end to the time and place where you can pray. And you know, one, one more idea for Advent. You've heard of the Advent calendar. If you don't have one, Maybe the family should get together and make their own Advent calendar and make sure the kids are included in this. So, as we look forward with anticipation, let's, let's live this period with great joy. Time's up here, so back to you. Thank you so much, Joan. Heartfelt thanks all year long. Thanksgiving week, the season of Advent. The Word of God says you were once darkness, but now you're in the light of the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what's pleasing in the Lord this Advent. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Watch carefully then how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise. Make the most of the opportunity because of the days are mm. evil. O oh Lord, deliver me from unconscious sin. Awaken us, Lord, from lethar lethargic faith. Rouse us, Lord, from complacency and self-satisfaction. Stir us to life, O oh Lord. Wake us up. Wake up the church that is so mm. often asleep in all the light around us. And yet we... Don't believe all that the Lord calls us to and is given to us in the sacraments and in this great faith, the moral teaching of the church. Enliven us, Lord. Rouse us. Stir us this Advent season as never before. You're an important part of this EWTN family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and with joy. Bye now. <laughs>